Good morning, everybody. Let's stand together and praise him. Can we clap our hands today and praise? I believe. I believe in the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe that the power of the gospel so makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken the way that stone I believe I believe I believe it says as I bow as I bow before you Lord I will rise in confidence I will see your goodness Lord in the land I'm living in no matter where clapping in this place. I believe that the walls start falling. When we fall down to our knees. I believe that the lame will go walking and the blind are gonna see. I believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to see. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you Good morning to you. Hope you had a lovely weekend. Man, we get to praise him today together as a community, as one. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hey, this morning we did have we did have one person get baptized in the first service. Come on. There's a new name written in glory. In just a minute, you'll see some, some more about that. Hey, if you're visiting with us. This weekend, welcome. There's a connection card somewhere around. Around you, just fill that out for us and drop it off in the welcome center. Hey, would you turn and greet somebody if you would around you? Hey, if you're joining us online, I'd like to welcome you to Bethlehem Community Church. 
We're so glad you tuned in. We miss you in the house. Drop a comment where you're watching from if you would. Would you share this service with somebody? Just worship with us.
And he said that's all it took. He went down to the altar and uh, committed his life to the Lord and, and said and we, we were sitting in the golf cart where a lot of great things happen, uh, except for good shots. We were sitting in the golf cart talking, and I said, well, Tyler, man, if that's the case, you need to be baptized. He said, let's do it. Before we finish the hole, he already registered to baptize. We were baptized, so we were ready to go. So, Tyler, who is your Lord? Jesus. Based on that confession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit of Christ, and baptism. All right, so uh, yeah, in the 8.30 service, we had a great baptism. Today in the 11 o'clock, you'll, we'll have our baby dedication as well. And so um, it, was, it was an awesome 8.30 service, thankful for the Jones family. And, uh, but the, uh, by way of announcements, you're a visitor with us. If you look inside the pew in front of you, there's a connection card. If you don't mind filling that out, you can drop that off in the offering bag. Or you can go to our website at bestcc.net. Uh, look, our website, website's got everything you need. It's, it's got, uh, it's got, you can do your tithes and offerings. You can fill out your connection card. It's got all our upcoming events. And in case you forget uh, what, what the announcements were, they're there. Okay, that's where I get them from, all right? You, they're there, so you can go in there and check out our announcements as well, all right? Uh, several things coming up. We got Fall Fest coming up at the end of October. That's the last Wednesday in October. Um, but we're going to have a meeting for that for any of our volunteers right after the second service next week, all right? Right after, or right after services next week. So be sure that, uh, that you come back and catch us right after the second service next week for that Fall Fest volunteer. Hey, we're going to need 100 plus volunteers, okay? And they can be students, they can be adults. We're going to need a lot of help to put this on. We also need a lot of candy. And so, you know, where there's a lot of little kids, we need a lot of candy. And so we're going to have candy, we'll give that out. If we're going to take that up inside the children's building, you can give those to Tory Brook on your way out. Also, don't forget on Wednesday nights, if you have kids that are involved out there, uh, they're practicing on Wednesday nights for their kid program. And, and so that begins at 6.30 uh, and the, the event's coming up here in November. So be sure to, uh, to get them involved. Out front, you may notice we have these boxes, Operation Christmas Child boxes. Uh, we, you, we were taking up supplies, now we're taking up boxes. So if you want to grab one of these on your way out, they're not real hard to fold up. Okay, there's instructions in them, you'll be good. Uh, grab it, you can fill them, and then bring them back. Put if it's for a boy or girl on top and leave the mailing uh, deposit inside it as well. Um, hey guys, this is something we do each year. Our goal this year is to do 500 boxes. No, we've already got some headway made, uh, but just fill, the, fill these up, bring them back, and we'll get those taken care of for the rest of October. I would like to say thank you to all the men and women who came yesterday for work day. If you notice, our buildings look uh, really good. The ladies are out here on their knees scrubbing uh, the front foyer. We had guys out there pressure washing. We got a lot of the big things taken care of. We still have some things to do. And so this coming Saturday, we're going to continue and have another work day. It probably won't last as long as the first one. But it'll be at 8 o'clock uh, this Saturday if you want to meet up here. we got some things that we've got taken care of. We have to take care of a men tomorrow night. We're actually going to go into the new building. Instead of doing our study, we're going to go into the new building and finish vacuuming so we can get the floor laid for the top floor. And so if you would like to help in that, please bring a shop vac or something. If not, we have a few extras. Uh, if you could come up here and meet us, uh, it shouldn't take terribly long if you want to come help us out so we can get that top floor laid and have Sunday school hopefully coming up December the 5th inside our new building. Senior adults, do want to remind you that you're going to meet here on the 12th. Is the 12th, right, Bob? On the 12th to, to go to the humble place for your single, single, senior adults gathering, right? Uh, so um, so y'all meet here at 10 o'clock. Y'all ride over uh, together, all right? Hey, church, thank you for joining us this morning. Again, thank you to all those who helped yesterday. Um, a lot of friendships made yesterday. A lot of people meeting each other for the first time and uh, you know, when you start spraying pressure washers around everywhere and scrubbing floors, you you, uh, you have a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. And so uh, work days are always a great time to get to know other church members, right, and, and things like that. So uh, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Uh, let's pray and we'll continue. God, I thank you for this day. Thank you that we're able to come here, Lord, and worship you for who you are. And, and Lord, I pray that today we can just Stop for a moment and focus on you. Lord, help us to remember who we're singing to. Help us to remember who we're praising. And Lord, as Jamie preaches, God, I just pray that you'll fill him with your spirit. And God, let it overflow. God, prepare our hearts for your word. And it's in your name. Amen. 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 
stand together, church. Oh, the Lord has moved in this place many times, and he can do it again. Do you believe that, church? Let's sing this together. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles. For you have never failed me
Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness every day. God, there's somebody in here that needs, needs today. 
We all need this. God, I pray you continue to move in this place, continue to move online. Lord, anoint the power of the word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning to you. Good to see all of you here. It's a beautiful day. God has given us to be in his house. Uh, man, we had a tremendous uh, first service. and Looking forward to the Lord moving in this service as well. We are well into a series entitled Fresh Off the Vine. Fresh off the vine. We're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, right? Uh, these characteristics that's given to us only through the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to help us to carry out this uh, Christian life, this Christian journey that God has called us to. God's given us commands. God's uh, told us who to be. He's told us how to act. He's told us how to carry out things in our life. And, and there's a set of of uh, attitudes or set of characteristics that he's made available to us to help us to carry them out. And we call them the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 gives us this list of nine fruits, fruits of the Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, we've talked about love, we've talked about joy, we've talked about peace and patience and kindness. Last week, we talked about goodness, right? And today, we're going to be talking about faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. faithfulness. Going to be talking about faithfulness. Let me highlight one verse of Scripture, just kind of lay the groundwork in, uh, it, for, for this message. It's in 1 Samuel 12, 24, just one verse. It says, only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all of your heart. Church, listen to me. If you live a life that's controlled by fears and anxieties and depressions, you'll never be able to faithfully serve God. If, if, if you allow your life to be controlled and ruled by the fears of this world... You won't ever be able to be faithful. Now, on the flip side of that, if you fear the Lord, how you're supposed to fear Him, you won't ever have to fear anything else. Because, and we're going we're gonna to move here, but listen, church, the calling of God, this Christian life, man, it calls for taking so many risks. It calls for, for sacrifice. It calls for an extreme amount of faith. To, to step out off into the deep end when, when we don't know what tomorrow holds. In. And church, you can't do that if you're walking fearfully in this world. There's no way. Only fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all of your heart. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this time. Lord, it's your time. That we've set aside and for you to move. And Lord, I just ask that you have your way today. And I'm thankful for this day, not, not because the sun is shining, not because 
we get to sit in the padded pew. But Lord, I, I'm thankful just because uh, you've made this day. Anything that you make, Lord, uh, we know is good. And, and so I, I pray that this service is, is beneficial. I pray that it is uh, pleasing in your sight. I pray that you have your way. I, I pray for every person, whether they're sitting here or they're listening online. I pray that you move about them. I pray that you move in their heart. I pray that you stir their um, affections and passions for you, Lord. I pray that you just uh, give us all the ability, Lord, just to focus and to pay attention and to listen carefully to what you have to say. And Lord, I, I know that I'm just a waste of time up here. I know that there's nothing that I can do of any significance unless you, sh unless you uh, anoint me. Unless you help me, unless you speak through me. And so, Lord, I pray that you do that. Lord, I, I don't desire to just to be up here and, and to preach a message for a pat on the back or a handshake. Lord, it's my desire that, uh, that you stir the hearts of those listening. It's my desire that you transform lives. It's, it's my desire that, that you move people closer to you. It's my desire that people get saved. It's my desire that people give their lives to you and walls are tore, tore down in their, in their lives. And I, I pray that relationships are mended. I pray that... Uh, marriages are strengthened. Uh, Lord, I, I just pray that you have your way in every capacity. I pray that you help me to speak with conviction and authority. I pray that what is said in the next several moments will not fall on deaf ears, but it will bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it's obvious that we live in chaotic times. Amen. It's, it's chaotic times. It's a very corrupted society that seems to be more divided than ever before. There's a political war going on, if you haven't noticed. It's a political war on, of undecided voters. You heard that term here lately? One of the great problems in our land is the fact that we have a large mass of people in America that have no clue where they stand. A large number of people that are very undecided in what they believe in and what they stand for. We call them the undecided voters. Well, God also has a problem with the undecided. You, should, you see, just as there are many undecided voters in our land, man, there are many undecided religious people living in our land. There are people who come to church every week. There are people who don't go to church but say that they're Christian. There are people all over the country that, that will tell you that they believe on some form at least that Jesus Christ lived and is our Savior and that God exists. But they are constantly riding the fence in what the, how they act and how they live out their life. They're really undecided, it seems, anyway, of which way they want to live. Today, we're dealing with a fruit that, unfortunately, you don't find very much, at least anymore. Uh, and when you do, man, I, I, perhaps this particular fruit, man, I, I'm convinced that it tastes better than, than any of the other fruits that we've talked about just because it seems to be so rare and it's so, um, so important if you're a boss or a supervisor or have anyone under you or, or you deal with volunteers or you have anybody who answers to you, anybody who's counting on you, you know how hard it is to just find somebody that's faithful. To find somebody that's loyal. Faithful to, to stay until the job is done. Faithful to remain Faithful to stick it out. Faithful to do what they say they're going to do. Proverbs 26, it says, Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. Man, faithful people are hard to come by these days. Yet when it comes down to it, uh, we are so dependent on 
people being faithful. Think about it. I mean, this world, for it to function properly, for things to be successful, it counts on people being faithful. A government, a successful government anyway, is dependent on its citizens to be faithful to obey the laws of the land. An army is dependent on its soldiers being faithful to carry out its mission or its particular duties. A healthy family or marriage is dependent upon the husband and the wife to be faithful to their vows, to be faithful to each other. A church that's totally totally dependent uh, on the people, uh, man, it's dependent upon their people being faithful to give and to serve. Hey, a, a, a church, a local body of believers can't be successful unless you've got a group of people who are committed to serve and, and committed to give of their time and talents and treasures to the Lord. It can't function if people aren't faithful. Every day our eternal destiny depends upon a God who's promised us that He is faithful. Faithfulness affects every relationship that we have. The Bible says it's a gift from God. When we receive Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit indwells us and brings the blessings of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. The fullness of these blessings depends on walking with God and yielding to His Spirit. We should be faithful to read and abide by God's Word and to seek the Lord in prayer. The Old Testament taught that the just, what? Will live by faith. And the New Testament echoes this three different times. We obtain that faith and our faithfulness by the grace of God. He is faithful to his children and by his grace will one day hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Let me give you a few observations before we get into the meat of the message. The first one is that I just want to give you a kind of a working definition for faithfulness. What, 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 what does it mean to be faithful? Well, when we're talking about faithfulness, this is what we're talking about. Being true to one's word. Being true to one's word. In, in, in other words, whatever you say, do it. When you tell somebody, Something. Can they count on you? Being true to one's word, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about not giving up. When we're talking about faithfulness, I, we're talking about having a, uh, a, a resolve to, to not give up and not throw in the towel and, and not just to easily back away and quit. And we're talking about simply trusting in God. When we're talking about faithfulness, being true to your, to, to your word, not giving up, in trusting in God. That's a definition, but let me, let me give you a demonstration. You say, okay, how, how's, this, how's this played out? What does this look like in our life? Well, it's, it's very simple. Uh, the first one is simply, hey, whatever you say you're going to do, do it. Church, listen to me. When you tell somebody that you can count on me, when you tell somebody you're going to be there, when you tell somebody you're going to do something... My goodness, do it. Do it. What, do what you say you're going to do. Man, talk is so cheap these days. I, I'm sick of holding my breath when people tell me they're going to do something. And, and my goodness, you, you, just, you, you don't trust them or believe them until you see them walk through the door. I mean, that, that, that's how we got to live these days. You just don't know. Do what you say you're going to do. And then keep your promises. My goodness, don't promise somebody something that you can't deliver. That's not a good quality of the church. That's not a good quality of of a people who, who, who proclaims a God that is so faithful to his children. If there's a true example of what faithfulness is, man, it's God, huh? God is faithful. Church, whatever he tells you, he's going to do. Whatever we read in the word that he's going to do, hey, you can bank on it, amen? Somebody said, well, what what if God said said an elephant's going to lay an egg? Well, I'd say get your skillet out, (laughs) amen? 
Okay, you, you, you can bank on it. If God said it, you, 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 can take, you can take it to the bank. Scripture speaks often of, of God's faithfulness. Proverbs 19, 21. It says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. We are to be faithful to God because he's faithful to us. Lamentations 3.23, it says, His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 2 Thessalonians 3.3, it says, For not everyone holds to the faith, but the Lord is faithful, and he'll strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Over and over, we learn that when God says that he'll do something, man, he does it. Even when it seems to be impossible. He, he just makes it happen. And when he says something that's going to happen, when he says he's going to do something, man, he does it. This is true for the past. It's true for the present and the future. If that was not the case, if, if God were unfaithful even once, ladies and gentlemen, he, he wouldn't be God. And we couldn't rely on him. And we couldn't believe his promises. God is eternally reliable, steadfast, and unwavering because faithfulness is just one of his natural attributes. It's who he is. Faithfulness is an essential part of who God is. And in his faithfulness, God protects us from evil, sets limits on our temptations, and forgives us of our sin. And when a person walks consistently with God in humble service to him. He or she is called to be faithful. So we're, we're all called to be faithful. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that should flow out of our Christian walk. So what does that look like? Let, let me give you three things that, that this uh, should be played out in your life. Three, three ways this should be played out in your life. This uh, godly faithfulness that we're talking about. Number one is this. Godly faithfulness is having a responsibility in the small. It's having the responsibility in the small. Luke 16, 10, this is what it says. He who is faithful with the little is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is little is unjust also in much. You see, what's wrong many times with, with people is that they think they're too good for the small things. Amen? We, we, we've gotten this concept that, 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 that we're too good to mess with the small things. Longfellow once said this, Most people would succeed in the small things if they weren't troubled with great ambition. Church, listen, to me, man, I, I'm, I, I'm all for this self-help stuff. And, and, and man, I, we need to set some goals. And all, but, man, you, you got all this material out there about setting big dreams and, and setting all these big goals. And, and what happens is we, we overlook the fact that there is no fast track to success. There is no fast track to the mountain. It takes hard work. And we don't want to put in the work. We don't want to go through some obstacles. We don't want to sacrifice some things to receive what God's told us. Or what God has, has made available to us. We want to fast track to his blessings. And many times it doesn't happen that way. And, 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 and we, I hear it all the time as a pastor. Man, if I just had this. If I had what they had, oh, no, no, no. I, and my first thought is, oh, no, you wouldn't. You'd do exactly what you're doing now. Because if you can't, if you're not responsible with the little things that God has for you, you wouldn't be responsible for all of that. And so, so there's a, being faithful has to do with addressing the small things in our life. Addressing the, 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 the little bit. And, and many times that's just a, that's, that's a testing. And it's a trial. And, 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 and man, church, if, if you can't take care of the little bit that God's given you, how in the world are you going to take care of the rest? I heard about a man who was, he, uh, he was talking to this big monstrous football player 
big old husky guy, he walks up to him and he looks up. And he says, he said, man, if I was your size, I'd go out into the woods and I'd find the biggest, scariest, grizzly bear that I could find and I'd wrestle him to the ground. <laughs> that football player looked down at him and pointed to the woods. He said, hey, fella, there's a lot of small bears out there. <laughs> Won't you go try to wrestle them? <laughs> you see, hey, we, we just, we just want to be on the mountain. We just want all the blessings. But the reality is we're not doing what we're supposed to do with the little. We're not doing what we're supposed to do with where God has us right now. Church, don't ever let the, the, the devil convince you, yeah, I'd go to church if I had this. Yeah, if I had more time, I'd go to church. I, I'd, I'd do this for God if I had this much. I, I'd serve if I had this much. No, no, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because whatever you're doing now is what you would do then. That's why God has called you wherever he has you. Be responsible with what you have. That's why God works in percentages. He doesn't give a certain amount. That's why he says 10% and, and give it's, it's 10% whether you make 10,000 or whether you make 100,000. It's the same thing. And if you can't do it with this, you can't do it with that. Be responsible with the small. Man, F.B. Meyer, he said this. Don't waste your time waiting and longing for large opportunities, which may never come. But faithfully handle the little things that are always claiming your attention. Man, I tell you what. Coming, rolling in here yesterday, it was a blessing to see all the people working. Sprucing this place up, man. I, 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 mean, I cannot thank enough all the people that work behind the scenes here at Bethlehem Community Church. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't function without all the people that address all the little things behind the scenes. That, that, that never get any praises. That, that nobody ever shines any spotlight on them. That, that nobody ever knows what they're doing. But man, they do it week in and week out. Week in and week out. We couldn't do it without those people. We couldn't do and, and, and listen to me. It, it's, okay, it's okay to do some big stuff. I, I mean, my goodness, God calls people to different things. And hey, there's nothing wrong with the spotlight if that's what God's called you to. But trust me when I tell you, if the spotlight is the only thing you do in God's kingdom, uh, you, you, you're, you're not being faithful. If, if, if the only thing you're doing in God's, in God's kingdom has to do with the spotlight... You're not being faithful. Responsibility in the small. Somebody told me this a long time ago. If you're too big for the small things, you'll be too small for the big things. If you're too big for the small things, you'll be too small for the big things. If you can't handle the little bit, you won't be able to handle God. Pouring his blessings out in your life. The second thing is this. Not only godly faithfulness is a responsibility in the small. But the second thing is this. It's a resilience in the struggle. It's, a res it's having a resilience in the struggle. Isaiah 40, 30 through 30, 31 it says. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. Hey, listen, church. It's okay to get tired. It's okay to get wore out. You, we're human. You're going to get wore down. But that's not an excuse to throw in the towel. That's not an excuse to, 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 to stay out and, and throw in the white flag. That's not an excuse to quit and walk away. Stay resilient. It says, even you grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord. Will renew their strength. 
You see, that's why you keep going. You can't walk away. You can't quit. Because if you just keep pressing on, we serve a God who gives you the little extra nudge that you need. Who gives you a little more strength to complete the task. But you got to be willing to complete it. You got to be willing to fight and, and press on toward the mark that God's laid a hold of you. You got to be willing to go forward. It says they'll soar on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not be faint. Say, man, I'm tired. I am growing faint. I am where are you being faithful? Is, is your hope found in the Lord? Or is, it, or is your hope and excitement being found in something else? Because according to the scripture, if your hope's found in the Lord, you won't bail out. You won't grow so weary that you can't keep going. You won't get so tired that you want to throw in the flag. Job 17, 9, it says, Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow Stronger. I uh, come across a story recently, and I, I highlighted a little bit on Wednesday night. In this uh, years ago, in this old village, this gentleman he fell in a deep hole. I'm talking about deep hole. I mean, they couldn't even see his head. I mean, he was just he's way down there. I mean, they they had no tools. They had no uh, way to rescue him or get out. And I mean, they contemplated it for hours. And finally, they said, there ain't nothing we can do. At least we can give him a proper burial. And so they just began to shovel dirt into the hole. Over and over and over. And as they kept doing it, eventually they saw his head. <laughs> they just kept doing it. Kept shoveling dirt. They, they, they saw a little more of his body. They kept shoveling. And eventually, he rises to the top. <laughs> Come to find out. And, and every, every time they'd shovel some dirt, he'd shake it off. <laughs> Step up a little higher. He'd shovel some more. He'd shake it off. He'd step up a little higher. He'd shovel some more. He'd shake it off. He'd step a little higher. And what was meant to bury him winded up saving him. Church, listen. Listen to me. Come real close. Yeah, people are going to talk about you. People are going to say some things. But I'm here to tell you when they do, just shake it off. And climb a little higher. Amen. People are going to stab you in the back. Yes, you're going to fail. Yes, you're going to make some mistakes. Yes, you're going you're, you're to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulation. It's called life, okay? You're going to go through those things. But I'm telling you, every time you do, every time the devil rides your backside, because make no mistake about it, he is out to kill, steal, and destroy your life. But he doesn't have the power. To bury you. And so every time he throws a little dirt on you, you just shake it off. And keep climbing higher. And what was meant to bury you, ladies and gentlemen, will eventually, God will rise you to the top. Amen? Amen. And save you. So you can press on and carry out his goodness and his call in your life. There's the responsibility in the small godly faithfulness is having a resilience in the struggle the third one is this it's about having a readiness for the substantial it's about having a readiness in the substantial proverbs 28 20 it says a faithful man will abound with many blessings a faithful man will abound with many blessings. You see, it's one thing to be faithful in the small. But the Bible talks about the more God puts in your charge, the more God puts in your sphere of responsibility, the more accountable you're going to be held to. 
And so there, 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 it's one thing to be responsible and, uh, for the little, but it's another thing to be ready for what God places in your, in, in your um, opportunities, and in, in your influence. Are you ready for that? Are you willing? Or, 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 or do we do like most Christians, this is what we do. We, we just sit back and enjoy the ride, don't we? Because if the truth be known, we don't want anything. We, we, we don't want God to give us anything that's going to hold us accountable and cause us to have to actually do something with. A readiness in the substantial. Have you been faithful with the blessings that God has given you? Have you been faithful with the gifts and resources and talents and friends and, and opportunities that God has placed on you. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I haven't been faithful. I hadn't been faithful to my family. I hadn't been faithful to my church. I hadn't been faithful to God's calling. I hadn't been faithful to God. What what can you tell me? Here, here's I, I could tell you a lot of things probably. Uh, some would be in the flesh. You know. uh, uh, some, some would uh, try to have some significant meaning or whatever, but uh, it, it'd do you no good. The, the best thing I can tell you is what God says concerning unfaithfulness, concerning if you've been unfaithful in some areas. First John 1 John 1.9, it says this, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and He's just. To forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the best thing I can tell you this morning. That's the best thing I can tell you this morning is just repent. Just ask for forgiveness. Because the only one that holds your salvation, ladies and gentlemen, the only one that counts at the end of the day says he'll forgive you. And he won't stop there. He'll cleanse you so that you don't do it again. Amen. You know, I've I've received I I received compliments in my life. I'm sure you you do too. And in fact, if I'm honest, most of the time, the compliments that I receive is really um, uh, it's it's undeserving. Many many times I have to explain. I no, I, that really wasn't me. Uh, that was somebody else, and uh, somebody else responsible for that. And uh, but, man, I, I tell you that there there is one compliment, if you will, that man I, I look forward to more than anything. And that is when I face God, when I face my Savior, and He says, "Well done, good and faithful." servant well done good and faithful servant you've been faithful with the little things now you have much ladies and gentlemen heaven will be much it'll be much and Whatever you think you have or don't have, whether you think it's a lot or a little, let let me give you a hint. It's all little. It's all little in this life comparable to the greatness of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you and thank you for this time. Lord, you know everyone's heart. You know where they stand spiritually. Lord, it's my prayer that for those that don't know you as their Savior, that today's the day of salvation for them. I pray for those that need to make decisions and, and Lord, that needs to Perhaps there are those that need to commit, make some acts of surrender, Lord. I I pray that you help them.
with every head bowed and eyes closed. No, no one looking around. As we close this service, the altar call is really a twofold. The first one simply has to do with salvation. Maybe you're here, you're listening online, or you're sitting here in the sanctuary. And you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I've never been saved. I'm not born again. I'm not a Christian. But I want to be. I don't want to leave here. I don't want to turn this broadcast off until I know that I'm right with God. I'm ready to do that right now. If that's your prayer, if that's where you're at, whether you're listening or you're sitting here, I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. Say, what do I need to do, Pastor? I'm ready. I'm ready to be saved. I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. You pray this to yourself. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I believe that you died for my sins. I also believe that you rose from the grave to conquer death, hell, and sin. Today I commit my life to you and I accept your forgiveness for all of my wrongdoings. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. No one looking. If you're listening online, you say, I prayed that, Pastor. What do I what do I do? First thing is you simply type these four words out in the comment section. I prayed that prayer. That's all you got to do. You just type those four words out. I prayed that prayer. We'll get in touch with you. and We'll share some things, answer any questions that you may have. We just want to let you know on some next steps that you need to take in this journey. Maybe you're sitting here. Say, I'm right here, Pastor, and I prayed that, and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Could I see your hand? You just slip it up. You say, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Just slip it up so that I can see it. Yes, I see that hand. I see that hand. You just slip it up. You say, I, I, I prayed that and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. All right. Hey, if you prayed that, will you look at me? Proud of you. Today, today's a great day. It's a big day in your life. Look at me. One more thing. I'm at. Stand up. Stand up. Come here. Come here. Maybe you're, you're here and you say, Pastor, if I'm honest, there's some areas in my life where I need to work on concerning faithfulness. Maybe it's just you say, man, I, I just, I need to be more faithful to God. Whatever the case may be. You say, Pastor, I'm dealing with some things. Would you, would you just lift me up in prayer? Could I see your hand? Yes, my goodness. Yes, see those. Let's stand. We're all going to stand. Hey, if, if you need to come and pray, man, I, I, I would encourage you to do this. If you feel led to pray in any regard, I would, I would encourage you right now. Be faithful to God. Just, just be faithful. Listen, there, there's nothing magical about coming up here. Uh, it, it, it don't matter if you stay there or come here. But, but there is something about stepping out in faith to, to, to just go, not worried about who's watching, just say, God, here I am. I'm just stepping out. Church, I, I read a, a statistic 
little while back, George Barner released some things and said, man, like 70% of people in the survey that they did asking Christians, about 70% of them said that many times they, they, they feel they need to go to the altar, but they don't. I, I, I'm not, I, just, I just encourage you to be faithful, whatever that means. If you, feel, if you feel led to come and pray, to step out, address something in your life, or maybe somebody else is on your heart, whatever the case may be, then you come. You come. Don't leave here with, with something weighing heavy on your heart. Hey, as we sing, you respond in the way that God would have you to. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you've made Jesus Christ your Savior, or maybe you'd just like some prayer or just some more information about our church, do us a favor and email us at the address at the bottom of your screen, or you can just reach out to us through the comment section of whatever platform you're viewing on. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and we hope to see you next week.